24 seconds. White Breeze goes into the site, commits to the plan. DGT's moving forward. DGT's oh! done it. EG, I'm not going to the mansion. What a stressful situation to be in as well, right? You go to the RMR, you fail to qualify. Now it's showdown time, another chance to get into a stadium, a proper land, and you fall at the first hurdle. You know, it is a bleak black hole for evil geniuses. The fact that you even brought up my rating, don't you think that I'm aware I suck? You're paying them a lot of money. They're not playing well. They're a part in a team. They're exposed to playing against the best teams in the world. And then they can't win in their region. What do we do? No, what do we do? What do they do? Hey folks, before we get into the video, I want to let you know that we have new merch, like this awesome touch grass hoodie I'm wearing right now. We have lots of cool designs, so please head over to the Score Esports merch store and pick up something nice for yourself. Okay, so in January 2022, North American Counter-Strike was looking for a win. It had been four long years since Cloud9 made history in Boston, and the North American scene had only deteriorated since. NA just died in, in CS hard. The region's best roster, Team Liquid, spent the online era in Europe because playing in North America just wasn't worth it. And many former pros called it quits, either to stream or to play Valorant. Still, there were some holdouts who were determined to take NACS back to the top. Despite 2021's challenges and a multi-year drought at premier events, EG stepped up to the task of revitalizing NACS, and they already had a few crucial pieces in place. Bulgarian opera Cirque was a rising star in NA. And no one defusing the bomb yet. He sees one up, Ooh. he flicks, he gets the kill. Now a quad, can he save it? Can he get the double OT? Cirque, you've got to be kidding me. He takes down every single one. And Breezy was a promising rifler who had an explosive start to his time with EG in 2019. Does is he actually gonna plant? Oh no, the Kriegs are coming. The Kriegs are coming. Oh Ooh, wait, maybe more. No way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Keeping both of these players for the new roster made obvious sense. But the big question was who could EG bring in to make them shine? They acquired one of the French scene's most experienced coaches, Damien Malik Marcel, who once headed up G2 and Team Envy. And the team signed Automatic, Rush, and Stewie2K, three players who were a part of the Cloud9 roster that gave NA its only major. On paper, it looked like one of the better rosters that could be assembled from what was available in North America. In reality, though, there were plenty of question marks about the team's performance, as was discussed on HLTV Confirmed. Three of the five players have been underperforming consistently in the last year. Well, well, I guess Rush had some time off, but yeah, he, get, he can get included into that. And then Automatic hasn't been playing the game for a significant period of time. Evil Genius's new roster started their time together at a 30-day boot camp with Stewie as the team's new IGL. But in a shocking later interview with 1PV after leaving the team, EG's assistant coach Evi revealed that even on day one, things were off to a rough start. Pour vous la faire simple, en termes d'attitude, on avait l'impression que les gars, ils faisaient, ils faisaient un face-it. Et, et on s'est regardé en mode, mais attends, si oui, c'est leader et il, il donne pas sa descam, il lâche pas sa com euh, tout le temps, euh, il est en mode fun, euh, il rage un petit peu. Evie went on to say that it wasn't as if he and Malik gave up, but the potential issues within the roster were clear from the get-go. And once EG debuted in the Blast Premier Spring group stage, the internal problems spilled over into their gameplay. Apex swings for it as they're jumping on the other side. And that AK will bring down both the SMGs. Suits up with a single kill on Breeze. Probably enough here to pre catching him as he comes out. They just have all the map control. Absolutely stellar performance from Vitality to start this with. The season has begun and they take down EG to open the whole thing with. They don't know the late rotators are coming in there. Two push, there's no flank. Cirk misses his shot. It all falls on Stewie. Alish clears the corner and Team Liquid clear EG. And with 35 seconds on this clock, it feels like more of an inevitability that Big have done it yet again in the face of adversity. Off of the back of a map one loss, they run this series. 2-1, take Vertigo, and send EG soaring. EG's first outing didn't inspire confidence that this new roster could end up as a top team. Sure, maybe fans expected a lopsided loss to Vitality, and maybe that close-fought series with Liquid was proof that the team had potential, but losing to Big? was kind of embarrassing. With Blast as their disappointing debut, Evil Geniuses had just under two months to be ready for the Antwerp Major, if they could even qualify. An NA Open qualifier had to be easy prey for the caliber of players on EG, 
but it didn't go that way. Stewie's team lost a close best of one to Strife Esports. If there were warning bells before, this loss triggered a full-on emergency alarm. Days later, EG qualified for the RMR, but only after a second place finish to party astronauts. And then, with six possible slots available, EG had to play a tiebreaker against 9Z to stay alive at the RMR. It was close, but the outcome was still a disaster. Breeze goes into the site, commits to the plan. DGT's moving forward. DGT's oh! dead. EG are not going to the major. EG weren't going to compete against the best in the world at Antwerp because EG couldn't even beat the best in North America. Not winning a single series in EPL season 15 and not qualifying for the main event of the year puts a huge question mark next to their roster. You're paying them a shitload of money, they're not playing well, they're a partner team, they're exposed to playing against the best teams in the world, and then they can't win in their region. What do we do? No, what do we do? What do they do? It's bad for UG that they didn't qualify, but I wasn't particularly surprised. <laughs> I probably, if you yeah. asked me, I probably would have favored Zero Zero Nation to make it over, over EG. Evil Geniuses gave their new roster a month of runway before they even had to play in a tournament. They shelled out for huge names. They expected big things. But halfway through April, less than three months after finalizing the roster, it was already looking like this experiment was destined to fail. And that's the problem for EG. On a good day, they can beat, I wouldn't say anyone, but, yeah, but they can be beat most good. teams. <laughs> On a bad day, they can probably lose to anyone. The worst part was that since they didn't qualify for the major, there wasn't much for EG to look forward to. Even the events the team did attend in late spring and early summer didn't exactly inspire confidence. What a stressful situation to be in as well, right? You go to the RMR, you fail to qualify for the Antwerp major. You come back home, you play the Dallas qualifier, you get eliminated, you're not playing in your own country. Now it's showdown time, another chance to get into a stadium, a proper LAN, and you fall at the first hurdle. You know, it is a bleak black hole for evil geniuses. Desperate times call called for desperate measures, and EG were desperate. In mid-May, they cut ties with assistant coach Evie and analyst Hepa, and benched coach Malik. And then, EG did something crazy. Calling it the blueprint, EG signed 10 more players, picking up two upstart NA rosters, Carpe Diem and Party Astronauts. This move raised a ton of questions. But the real bombshell was what former assistant coach Evie told French site One PV about what was happening behind the scenes. Stewie, euh, il nous a mis des jolis clutch, etc. Alors je j'ignore pas le fait que si vous regardez ses stats HLTV, il a 0.55 de rating contre du top 5 mondial euh, chez EG, donc euh, son niveau est extrêmement questionnable. Et le truc c'est que bah il, il se remettait plus en question en tant que joueur. Et il était, c'était pas un bon lead. Donc, à partir de là, euh, c'est très difficile. Unsurprisingly, Stewie had a lot to say in an intense stream the next day. Like, I understand my attitude is not the best. I'm a guy who does not like to lose. I would win in any other condition. I would do anything to win. And anyone who's been watching me, anyone who's playing on my team knows that. Like, they know that winning is everything to me. The fact that you even brought up my rating, don't you think that I'm aware I suck that I'm putting the team in front of me that I'm worried about the other side of the map Stewie said it himself he didn't like to lose but that was what EGCS roster seemed to do best by summer 2022 even with the so-called blueprint in place but Anakes is looking to hunt the last heads as DJ drops his pwn alone all alone to do everything he can to keep EG alive and it's just not gonna happen it was a a good effort right here for Evil Geniuses. I thought we saw some glimpses, Jay, over the course of this entire map, but Astralis were the outclassing element, and uh, my goodness, Flame F was just an absolute tank. Pwn alone, just trying to make anything happen, but it's not going to be, and there's the win coming through from Astralis. Not really tested a massive amount. And so Stewie decided his time on the roster was over. In July, he became EG's newest content creator and began to stream Valorant. Damn, we back, baby, we back. A disastrous six months on EG's CSGO team ended with Stewie taking a step back from competing, and his pro career looks like it's over. 
at least for now. But that hasn't stopped EG from carrying on with the blueprint. There are still a ton of players on their roster, and hell, maybe we'll see the model actually pay off one day. What we do know is that the Stewie-led roster that lasted half a year is, unfortunately, one of the biggest flops in NACS history. Considering the amount of money likely spent versus the results, it could actually be the worst. Stewie has said that he has things to work on, that he can get better and return to his former glory. If he decided to stay away from CS forever, that would probably be the most surprising thing about this whole mess. For now though, all the CS community can see is the wreckage of one of the biggest disasters in CSGO history, and the players that got dragged down with it. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.